All right, so now that you've gone through your plan, now we're going to move on to the last step, which is what? Improve. Improve. Now, both teams did a pretty good job, but what I want you to think about is how could you make it even better? Teachers in the Edison School District approach their positions proudly with an understood conviction to influence and encourage their students to decipher any riddle or challenge presented to them. <laughs> to the best of their ability, they urge their students to use their talents, comprehension, and instincts in order to expand their knowledge of a particular subject or simply gain the confidence to present a solution to an existing problem. And until recently, a specific pedagogy involving seamless integration of multiple areas of study designed to encourage an entire classroom packed with varying degrees of intellect to work together toward providing a solution to a common problem did not exist. But earlier this year, a group of elementary teachers and administrators began to introduce a concept into the classroom, iSTEM, Integrative Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. Not only does this model encourage the blending of foundation subjects like math and science in order to solve a problem, but it also allows other areas of curriculum like language arts, social studies, and visual arts to play an integral role in the student's thought process. And in just a few weeks' time, the perceived results of this initiative are astounding. We as teachers love it just as much as the students do. Um, they cheer when we ask them to take out their iSTEM notebooks. Teachers are designed to be creative. We go to school because we want to teach kids in a creative way and be fun with it. I'm definitely seeing students that are stronger problem solvers. Um, it has raised creativity levels and ultimately I think it's made them more confident in their own abilities. Well if we look at how, we, how people learn, there's a lot of research that's been done on this for the last 100 years. Uh, there's actually a model called Bloom's Pyramid. And it's a pyramid at the very bottom we start off with remembering knowledge as the lowest form of education in the classroom. I tell you a fact, you remember it, you give it back to me on a test. The chances of you turning that into an enduring understanding are something that you're going to remember really well later. Get better as we move through Bloom's Pyramid, which we ask students to apply and evaluate. At the very top of the pyramid though is the tip, which is creativity. For a very long time, we felt that creativity was, has been something that is subjective. How do you measure that? How would you assess that? How could you work creativity into your lessons? However, the creative process, being able to prototype, model, draw, uh, iterate, redesign, um, uh, imagine, brainstorm, create, innovate, invent, these are terms that never come up as educational objectives and lesson plans because we haven't got to that creativity tip. Okay, so that's your drawing, right? Yes. Okay. And would you cut up? Did you cut up the, uh, cut up the big box? Okay. Good. Our um, center at the College of New Jersey has been collaborating with um, your school district for um, more than a year now, and one of the things that we're working on is trying to create a model program of integrated STEM education that would work well in Edison, and also hopefully could be replicated in other school districts. The first day might be more of the design and the drawing and then go home and maybe bring any more materials. That way the children have a chance to really go home and think about it and what else could we bring. We call them building blocks, okay, and they're, um, we're working with uh, a, a group of building blocks called teams, which is technology, engineering, the environment, math and science. So we took STEM and we added an E, so they all have an environmental focus, okay. They do encourage the integration of these uh, all aspects of STEM. They definitely encourage um, creativity. Our third grade unit focuses on water. Our fourth grade unit focuses on solar energy. The fifth grade unit focuses on improving our nation's infrastructure. Those three topics are very important real world topics that were identified by the National Academy of Engineering as things that um, the global problems that engineering can help solve. Okay? And they are all presented in a way that they're meaningful to kids. We were very yes. conscious of 
the water being too fast or too slow. <laughs> Unlike a hose, do. things like that, the hose is right. constantly got to go back and forth. Here you can control how much water goes in. <laughs> in the, um, the class that you visited with today, uh, third grade teachers that are going to be going back to their classrooms doing um, uh, a model um, a model building block, okay, most people would refer to it as a unit, uh, a challenge, which is basically to kind of address one of our real world challenges, and that would be providing clean water, access to clean water for everyone. We changed it at least a good six or seven times uh, before we actually went and shopped and then brought everything over to start building. They th brought us through a series of lessons um, that allowed us to build up the knowledge in order to use it for today's culminating activity, which was to build this pet wash station and to use our knowledge of what we learned throughout the lessons yesterday of conserving water, um, the global awareness of how water is affecting all over the world, not just here, um, where droplets of water could have possibly traveled through and all different series of, of things all throughout the different curriculums, all in just one day yesterday for us to be able to make this pet wash station, um, which was, it was, for me, it was very eye-opening um, an experience for myself and my colleagues that, um, that were at my table and my team as well. This is a culmination of a whole series of, of, of activities, so it's a good example of project-based learning. And prior to the culminating activity, which is a pet wash station, which uh, you were able to capture on video, they went through a series of a, probably a half a dozen other activities specifically designed to give them skills, and those were problem-based activities. There were smaller things, okay, smaller challenges, and in the end, the, the teams of teachers worked together to do a model which they now know about and they can hopefully go back and replicate successfully in their classroom. Who would like to give me a little bit of feedback real quick? What is the problem that we are faced with? What is the problem that we are faced with? Sydney? Uh, the problem that we're faced with is that our school is creating a new playground and it needs a new structure for the playground, so uh, we're creating a model. What professional engineers do all the time is solve real problems in the real world that don't have one right answer. So it's important to take that methodology out of industry and provide it to students as a pedagogy, and this is what we call design-based pedagogy. Okay, so looking at our engineering design process. Remember, we've already asked the questions about the ecosystem. You imagined your own ideas last week, and now you've put them together into your plan, so we're ready to move on to the next step, which is create and test. Instead of me telling you how fast something will fall when I drop it, and we do experiments over and over again to find out the terminal velocity or whatever, whatever it is, um, I give you this method that you can apply anytime you want to discover something about the world where you don't know any, where you don't know that finite answer, scientific method. But in the scientific method, there is no innovation or invention, and all of us arrive at the same conclusion at the end. That only takes us so far up Bloom's pyramid. When we take that knowledge and we have to apply it to a situation through pre creating something new that has value, that is the highest level of cognitive rigor in the classroom and the greatest chance that a student's going to remember something. And even better, we do this by bringing the content areas together, just like they are in real life, where they're not separated. If we put this squares on the bottom, so it will not, to make it heavy on the back, so it will fall off. The, the iSTEM program, because it's so integrated and because it's dealing with real world challenges, it, it ultimately serves its purpose as soon as you introduce it. The kids really, you know, can grasp onto it and, and that yay, it's time for STEM, is, is more so the excitement and the activity that's going on, but it also applies to them. They're, they're hungry for the knowledge that, that we have. Um, and, and they, you know, ultimately they're driving the classroom now. We don't have to prompt them to, okay, do vocabulary, do this, do that. They're coming to us saying, you know, what does this word mean? How do I solve this sort of problem? And they're really hungry to, to kind of get those things done. So instead of, you know, having to push and prod, you know, we're, we're kind of getting pulled into it because they're, they're leading the way. They're the driving force that really makes it go. So, uh, you know, I think it finally answers that age-old question of you know, why do I have to know this? So it's, and, and also speaking from an in-class resource setting, um, I really feel that the lower level learners are, are rising up and earning the respect of their peers. So it's been a really beautiful transition in, in our classroom um, because the students that are constantly being pulled to one side to you know, have a, a short and modified lesson are now 
working with their peers and actually taking the lead on many or most of the lessons where you have some of the, the more talented students stepping back and thinking like, whoa, I never would have thought of that. I decided to brainstorm. I got my idea. First we could use the can, always at the top. Then we could use the, we could flip the whole entire thing upside down. I have a story about one of my stu students from last year. She is more into the arts and um, a, a lot of times in her head. She won't hear you um, when you're calling her name, when she's reading a book, she's really into it. Um, I called her Star Girl. I don't know if you've read the book Star Girl, but it was about a girl who's very different and just very artsy and into music. And um, my little Star Girl was trying to light an LED light bulb with a battery. And as a teacher, you don't want to tell them what to do, right? It's, it's, sometimes it's really hard. But so I kept just simply stating the supply table is right here and you can take anything you need. Um, so when nobody was really paying attention to her, she kind of floated over to the supply table and she grabbed a few more batteries in addition to the one her group had already been struggling with. And then all of a sudden an explosion of cheering came from her side of the room. Oh, oh my god, we got it! Yeah! Got it. Woo! Stop, stop yelling! And I was just so proud of her because she was thinking diff differently. She was trying to solve this problem, you know, where all the other kids are just taking this one battery and trying to you know, work the wires, and, and she thought, well, maybe if I just add a few more. Um, that's just an example of, of the deeper thinking involved in all different kinds of learners working together to solve a problem. But how much should be elevated? Uh, uh, not too much, because, you know. No, the highest we could do is 12 inches, so we could do, like, about 9 inches. Well, our, our model is not going to be to scale. One of, the, one of the big misconceptions about STEM education is that the T, the technology piece, only stands for, um, educational technologies, computers and, and Promethean boards and smart boards. But it's also about technology being the study of the human design world, which very little of that, even though it surrounds us everywhere, uh, is in the curriculum. But it is the place where all the real problems lie and where change is constantly taking place. It creates a lot of relevant context for learning about math and science and both technology and engineering concepts and principles at the same time. So students engage in that through um, the little e for engineering, little e and big e. And the difference would be that the big E refers to engineers as a vocation or as a trade. Perfect! Maybe look at this. Squeeze this. Oh, man, amazing! There's so many different creative outputs. We really have them in a lot of hands-on situations. The stakes are, ra are they're, ra they're raising the stakes here. You know, it's not, can they do this, can they do this, can they do this? It's, you know, it, it's really asking them to do a lot, a lot of situational type things. Uh, so I think overall creativity and, and self-confidence has, has risen and ultimately I think that will have a, a long-term gain. We can't make two sets of monkey bars because we can't have a safety no, net for the older kids. we could rise the platform. Yeah. Like, do something to rise it. But what about the net? We're going to have to keep on putting it on, putting it off. The Same thing with the net. It rises it more. more. It will slide as we sit. It showed teachers that when students learn problem solving and critical thinking in a real world context, right? Um, that you don't have to teach to the test piece by piece. You have a critical thinker who can think. And that is why I think these programs have, have, have had such great success. I'll give you about five minutes to go through this, and then you're going to share your ideas with your team. So think about what you noticed, what you saw. Did you encounter any problems during a specific step? Is there a material you found you didn't need? Could you have used another material of some sort? Think about those and write it all down here. Project-based learning is something that follows this design-based pedagogy, right? But across the country, there are only three or four teacher prep programs um, for elementary that deliver instruction on the methodologies of design-based pedagogy. Right? Which means that across the country, everyone who's baking a balloon car in science in eighth grade, um, this, I mean, this, these are great activities, I'm not, I'm not knocking at all. Um, are engaging these things possibly without any design-based pedagogy. What does that look like? That looks like when we get to the testing phase um, and you know, the balloon car has to go a certain number of feet. If it doesn't go that many feet, students lose points. That's the summative assessment in most schools is put on the testing phase and then it stops because the mindset, the paradigm is, is that, well, in the scientific process, the inquiry method, we do an experiment and when at the end, after testing, we arrive at that conclusion and we're done. So if you don't get good training up front, design-based pedagogy, and focus on that, then I just gave you one example of, of where you can make, make, 
take this project-based learning activity with so much potential and end up making it antithetical to learning. Because that's the goal, to get them to apply what they've learned. You know, we're, we're finally getting towards the tops of, you know, towards the upper levels of Bloom Taxonomy. You know, when you're getting into the create and the application and, and these higher level things where they weren't really around before or we didn't have the time for it. The, the STEM curriculum all revolves around it. You have to do this. Where in science, you know, some of those experiments, you know, they'd be great if I had the time, but I have to get through the, this concrete material in the book. Um, you need to do these things in STEM. There's no kind of just jumping over the this lesson. lesson. Is the experiment. You know, and so and then you know, now you're in a lesson, and they they need information from you. So they're they're coming to you, or they're in independently investigating. So the term that I've that we've kind of been throwing around in other arenas is. No longer are we like the gatekeeper of knowledge. We don't have to stand there and be like, I have the knowledge, you have to come get it from me. You know, kids are like throwing up their hands like, oh, there's a brain pop video, like she said, like about gears and some kid raises, you know what, I read an article about, you know, water flowing through this tube and, and suddenly the kids are now all collaborating. It's no longer where to find the information, it's what to do with the information once you have it. And so, you know, that, the idea of a facilitator and, and the guide from the side, you know, it, it, it's really coming to life.